Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will learn how to be flexible, remember these words, flexible, open-minded when dealing with sentence function questions. The most challenging question, as I said right now, the most challenging questions in the writing and language section. Well, I'm not in the habit of talking that much. Let us go for a real start right away. And here, SAT writing a language, okay, rhetoric, sentence function. We are going to cover today these points in the sentence function. Revising sentences, recognizing revising questions, okay, um, achieve a goal, support, evidence, example, emphasis, summarize, setting up, do you remember transition, adding, deleting sentences, recognizing, adding, deleting sentences, context, is it on topic or off topic, is it a correct level of detail, purpose, what else, uh, uh, what purpose does it serve, uh, no purpose at all, common pitfalls, common difficulties, uh, irrelevant, opposite, untrue, believe it or not, these are subjects for questions in writing a language section and this question considered regarded by many as the most challenging part other questions which has to do with have to do with uh, uh, punctuations have to do with uh, uh, grammar i mean that that the, these are easy questions okay but these questions are the question that uh, baffle and confuse many of you okay and let us start with this sentence function questions came in two flavors, in two kinds, revising sentence and adding or deleting sentences, okay? Let us start with revising sentences. And most of the lesson today is gonna be, well, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to answer questions, okay? This kind of sentence function questions asks you to revise part of an existing sentence, part of the sentence, in order to fulfill a specific goal. What is that specific goal? And here, we're going to start with this drill question. Bragg Castle houses the Bohemian crown jewels, which are only displayed to the public on certain days every five to ten years. And the question is, look at the question. Which of the following true statements would most clearly convey the reason for the display of the Bohemian crown jewels? Okay, remember here, remember here we are asked to change this sentence to best support the idea okay that uh, 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 Bragg Castle houses the Bohemian crown jewels okay and I want people to choose here and the question don't forget the word reason would most clearly convey the reason for the display of the Bohemian crown jewels are you gonna go for a b c d I'm waiting for you let me tell you this uh, for some people for some people on certain days that's that's tempting that's tempting mister what's tempting I mean like what some people say what's the problem here what's the problem here which are only displayed to the public on certain days every five to ten years what is the problem here teacher nothing but it has to do mainly with what with the question look at the question here Look at the question here, and I need something that would most clearly convey the reason for the display of the Bohemian crowd jewels. So in that case, that's the reason. So let us read it this way. Bragg Castle houses as a verb the Bohemian crowd jewels, which are only displayed to the public on certain days every five to six to ten years. So why? What is the reason? To commemorate historic what events. And commemorate means what? Uh, uh, show respect uh, for something or someone. You got the point, right? So in that case, we'll go for what? We'll go for B. Um, I need to say I'm really sorry about the pen today. Uh, the pen is so slow. I don't know what happened to that uh, setup. Now we'll go for evidence. Okay. What is the evidence and how can I see evidence questions in the writing and language section? Some support questions may ask you to find the best piece of evidence that supports some idea or claim 
in a sentence. Let us take a look at this example. Okay, um, here, most people need eight hours of sleep at night, every night. Remember this. But can survive on less? We need to see the question. And I say, teacher, that sentence, is it correct? Yes, it is correct grammatically and even meaning-wise it's correct. But the question may say something else. Let us wait. And here is the question. Which choice best supports the idea that most people need eight hours of sleep? Again, which choice best supports the idea that most people need eight hours of sleep? Huh. Who can tell me? Waiting for you. Excellent. Okay, so teacher, why not A, like um, uh, uh, here, um, but can survive on less? Why not A? Simply that choice isn't directly talking about eight hours. And here we are talking about what to remember. We are talking about eight hours of sleep. But here is not talking about eight hours. So A is wrong. Uh, B, why B is wrong, mister? Uh, the choice is talking about six hours of sleep instead of eight. So we have got six hours of sleep instead of what? Instead of eight. And then, uh, uh, what about C, mister? The choice is talking about what? Uh, um, about sleep, that's fine. Uh, but, but, the point is, it just states a fact that eight hours is a lot of sleep and, 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 and that's it. Here, now we need something that has to go with, with this. Which choice best supports the idea that most people need eight hours? So in that case, I'll go for what? I'll go for D. We get an actual reason. So I want you to write here, this is what? This is a reason. This is a reason, okay? So it goes with what? With most people need eight hours of sleep a night. Is it relevant? Is it helpful? That's very important. Let us talk about... Yes, Shabab, something else. Let us go to drill question here. And let us start this one. Oxford University. Oxford University's uh, uh, Bodleian Library System is considered one of the most important research libraries in the world. The library's famous Radcliffe camera is located in the city center. You need to know that right away that this part is irrelevant you need to tell like tell yourself like mariam hani this part is irrelevant that's for sure you got the point okay but before i mean like what you can feel it while you are reading but we haven't read the question yet if we started reading the question here which of the following best supports the claim that this library huh, starting from here is one of the most important research libraries in the world okay Yusuf al Shimi said it's C, okay? Huh. What do you think, Yeshebe? Huh. What do you think? All of you went for C? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Here we actually get some reasons for why this library might be so important. So C tells us it houses. It houses means what? It contains nearly 12 million books and thousands of ancient what? And thousands of ancient texts. Thank you very much. So I will never go for A, B, or D, even I don't want to what? To read them. Thank you very much. Let us go to another drill question. Although it is less known than other European cities, Bragg has some of the most unique architecture in the world. For me, this sentence is fine. But the point here is, what is the question is asking here? Which would be the most effective example to illustrate the statement made in the above sentence? What is the statement made in the above sentence? Huh? Although it is less well known than other European cities, Bragg has some of the most unique architecture in the world. Okay, huh. what do you say? Waiting for your answers. D. And D, this is the most effective example to illustrate the statement made in the above sentence. Even the cluster of buildings in Bragg Castle differ greatly in the style of their design. This is the only choice that discuss what, ya shabab, architecture or the design of the building and other structures. This is it. So that's a reflection of that sentence. Thank you very much. Let us go to another part that we might face, might encounter and see in the exam, emphasis. It is also common for the SAT to ask which choice best emphasizes or highlights a point. Huh. 
let us read this one by the way this one is not easy take your time and try to be open-minded try to be flexible this is how we started it the Bragg Zoo contributed significantly to saving the endangered animals sorry the endangered uh, Preswalski's horse that's the horse from sorry from extinction think about it and the question is and the question is like, wait a minute here, Yusuf the question is which choice best emphasizes the Bragg Zoo's impact influence again which choice best emphasizes the Bragg Zoo's impact on the fate of the Preswalski's horse okay think about it okay some said B some said B uh, Yusuf Munir A A B A A A oh my god Julie A Tari A type would you hold your horses um, let us do it this way and let us read the question again and I need to to do um, something that best emphasizes the Bragg Zoo's impact on the fate of the Preswalski's horse impact of the Bragg Zoo on the fate on the fate of uh, Preswalski's horse in other words which is the strongest way to express the zoo's impact or influence uh, those who said a contributed significantly significantly I mean that's fine for me by the way that's fine for me but here I need to tell you notice the question I need impact on the fate of Preswalski's horse uh, uh, that's fine um, I mean like it could be tempting for many people so j just just wait a second here uh, what about uh, so a for me I will never go for it and I'm gonna tell you why uh, C was a place that was very important in I mean that's that's something that's something not very necessary you understand what I mean but when you say the impact of Bragg Zeus on the fate of that horse played a vital role and I, I, I explained it here by the way I explained it here what does it mean the answer must tell us that the zoo actively played a role that's very important which is good detail but the key is vital the key is what vital that's how we know the zoo was not just helpful but what but essential you got the point you say teacher so what is the difference between contributed significantly when you contribute significantly to something it doesn't mean you play a vital role a vital means what essential uh, it mean in other, in other words if you want to write this word indispensable لا يمكن الاستغناء عنها. So we need something like that. Played a vital role in. Played a vital role in. Uh, uh, are you all convinced with that? Are you all convinced with that? Thank you very much. Then we might face questions like that in the exam. Summarize. Okay, we have seen that, that a lot. The next common thing you will be asked to do on a revising sentence sentences question is to choose the sentence that best sums up some information that came beforehand let us look at that example okay and then i'm going to ask you for i'm going to ask you for uh, an answer again the ashmolean museum is home to works of art from across the centuries throughout times okay new exhibits from all time periods are regularly featured in the museum we have got many many wait a minute Yusuf. many exhibits from all time periods okay uh, from the 19th 18th 15th century okay ancient and modern art alike are prominent prominently displayed in the museum's galleries in the museum's galleries it is clear that the Ashmoleans or the Ashmolean is very popular among local university students you need to tell yourself when you see something like that huh you need to use your intuition what it does it mean intuition this sentence is you remember the question that we asked in the beginning irrelevant fair enough okay so which choice best best or provides the best summary of what of the paragraph okay uh, uh said d uh, somebody said F we don't have F come on Amr said D okay 
Perfect. Okay. So what we have read here, thank you, Abdurrahman. What we have read here, of course, I will never go for A, has been around for a long time. Come on. That's unnecessary detail. Yes, it is relevant, by the way. This one, it is relevant, but it's unnecessary detail. Is going to stop opening so many new exhibits soon. Come on, there was no mention at all, right? Of course, values a wide variety of what of artworks. Thank you very much. And then, we are going to in a year to see a question like that in the exam. Set up, set up, and I need people. I need people uh, uh, um, uh, to know the meaning of what of setting up. Okay, this is very important. The SAT likes to ask us. Which sentences best set up an idea? Take a look at this example, okay? Shabab uh, Banat, uh, these or this paper is not taken from any book. That's according to my experience. This is according to my experience and what I see in the exam, okay? Type. Um, what about set up an idea? But before we go through this one, we need to read this. What does the question here? What does the question stem? mean when it says set up the information or sets up the information for the sat something that sets up by the way we can use this again yeah minna in reading uh, for the sat something that sets up the next part of an essay or passage is something that makes that next part the most clear and unsurprising and i always say you remember what i always say huh Pave the way for. Closely connected. Thank you very much. And I always say, pave the way for. That sets up. So what does it mean sets, sets up? If it appears in a reading passage or a writing a language passage, it means that something, uh, 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 something that makes the next part or the, uh, the, or the next part of the passage or the, the paragraph the most clear and unsurprising. There is no surprise. There is no sudden turn of direction. Just expected something expected that means we we want to pick phrases that are closely connected and help explain the information immediately after what after them that's the meaning of setup okay that's why here huh, that needs people who are aware of what we are saying right now after years after years of careful development after years of careful development the new math curriculum was published. Teachers, parents, students, and critics all praised its clarity. They were happy. They, 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 they praised, they acclaimed the clarity of the, the curriculum, the depth, and the engaging material. Which choice most effectively sets up the information that follows? Now we need to see whether this part is right or wrong. Okay. Uh, if after years of careful development, the new math curriculum was published, does the following sentence reflect the previous one? Teachers, parents, st students, and critics all praise its clarity, depth, and engaging materials. Okay, A, of course, no. Was finally released to the public. Okay, uh, does it mean was finally re released to the public? That makes the parents, students, and critics praise the clarity? Was released with or to wide acclaim. Allahu Akbar, Allah Azza. Okay, wait a minute. Was initially poorly received. Of course, poorly received. That's completely wrong. A, completely wrong. Mr. was released means what? I'm going to tell you. Was released means published. Acclaim means what? Means praised. Write it down. Write it down. Okay? So, this is Yajudi, uh, the one. So, we have to go for what? For C. Thank you very much. What is... Huh, let us read this one. Okay? Akit. You know what does it mean, Akit? You know what Akit stands for? Okay. Stands for... Huh. Note, Abdurrahman, note. No. Nobody would, would think about it. Anyway, Akit means what? I'm trying to be modest enough. Ahmed Khalifa, important 
tip. I know I'm not funny. Okay, anyway, when it comes to setting up the phrases you have to choose from will often also contain what? Will always often contain what? And when I say often, ya shabab, ya yusuf, ya munir, it's not always. It's not always. Often contain transition words. Remember, ya nayera. Remember, ya ali. When it comes to setting up, most probably you're going to see a transition what word. Like, so, and, however, as a result, consequently, something like that. But I will never say in all the questions, okay? Remember this. When it comes to setting up phrases you will have to choose from, will often also contain transition words. Pay close attention to those. They can, they can make a difference in, in what, in how closely connected the phrase is to the info it's supposed to what to set up. Okay? Hopefully you understand. Let us go to this one. Let us go to drill question one. And here. Bragg's ancient Charles Bridge features 30 statues that were added to the bridge between 1683 and 1714. Okay, setting up, remember, the statues represent saints and patron saints of Christianity that were particularly revered, esteemed, or respected in that time. And the question is, I want you to read it again, silently. Which of the following best illustrates the influence of religion, and I want people to circle this one. You don't have the paper, I'm sorry. The influence of religion on chic art and architecture. Okay. Tell me, tell me, I want you to choose an answer choice that has to do with what? With this. Influence of religion and uh, on the what? On the art and architecture of Czech. Huh. You go for what? Uh, I think it is A. Somebody said A. Very nice. A, very nice. Because the statue represents saints and patron saints of Christianity. This is what? Thank you. This is religion. Where is the art? Huh? That were uh, uh, the art here and the architecture. That's what the art and architecture. So thank you very much. You did it. You did it. This one discusses both religion and art and is relevant to the sentence before it. And I think this is relevant to the sentence before it. Type. If you go for here, uh, B, uh, and, and in B, ya shabab, here, in B, this is about religion, but not art and architecture. Here, famous churches, that's religion, but not art and architecture. What about C? C, by the way, it's tempting, by the way, for many people. Many of the most famous artists of the era participated in crafting sculpture only hear what architecture and art but does not include anything about what religion so i'm gonna cross it out cross it out then d uh, uh, and d here yeah, shabab, uh, in 1965 all of the statues were placed in the national museum come on this has nothing to do with us it does not include what religion no inclusion of religion so you are definitely you are definitely right okay let us go to drill question two yeah, who's going to read drill question two? I need people to read. The Charles Bridge also includes the Old Town Bridge Tower, built in the 14th century, one of the most famous Gothic structures in Europe. Okay. Okay, tell me. Yes, yeah, hey. The question is, based on the sentence above, I'll hear this one, and given that all the choices are true, let us remember let us just put this in mind like all the choices are true which of the following would best illustrate the artistic and i underlined it the artistic and historic value of the tower i need an answer choice that illustrate the artistic and historic value of the tower huh, you go for what waiting just read it again please dahlia d um most of you said d Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, so let us let us say this one. A greatest symbols of national strength. Why not A? Why not A? This is not mentioned in the sentence at all. Can did you see? I mean, those who said A national strength. Do you have national strength here, in this part? No. Uh, highest sorry, hugest tourist attraction. What about B? Nope. I will never go for it. Tourists are irrelevant to artistic and historic value. Okay. 
uh, most impressively huge and by the way here most impressively huge uh, for me uh, uh, while size may be important uh, may be important to artistic or maybe historic value uh, the relationship should be much clearer what is the the best relationship here is d most ancient look at the word ancient most ancient and pristine examples of gothic ar architecture okay and here we have got uh, a ancient which is what which is uh, um, uh, and gothic architecture which is what which is uh, uh, artistic and and uh, and ancient which is what which is historic i mean like what d is uh, the right reflection of what we have to say here okay now we have covered Yeshabab. Now we have covered, as you can see here, uh, uh, the first part, which is what Yeshabab, uh, which is uh, 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 revising sentences. Um, let us go now for adding and deleting sentences, okay? The second type of questions, or the second type, sorry, the second type of sentence, the function questions, asks you whether the author should add or remove given sentences from the paragraph. For questions like this, you have to determine for a question like this you have to determine two things whether or not the sentence belongs and why that's the case okay remember this recognizing adding deleting questions the question appear in one of two forms the writer is considering deleting the underlined sentence should the writer do this yes because no because that's one what about the other part the other part is at this point the writer is considering adding the following sentence information okay should the writer make this addition here yes because no because this question can be a little harder than revising phrases questions because we have to determine the statement the statement's relevance to a broader context so that's the first thing we will talk about, okay? Let us go to this one. And I'm just going to give you time. Context. Context is very important here. Okay? What does mean context? Okay. Uh, when I say the context of a passage means what? I mean what? The, uh, uh, the main idea and the, 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 the previous or and the following sentences uh, that together uh, uh, form a sort of coherence, something like that. Context just refers to what? The subject of the paragraph is what the subject of the paragraph is. That's the context, the thing or idea it's about. Uh, I'm going to read this paragraph and we are going to what uh, to start uh, doing some questions about this paragraph. OK, OK. And I'll start from here to understand Mumbai. We must first understand its long and politically unstable history, Mumbai in India. We have to consider or first understand its long and politically unstable history. Mumbai has been fought over by many different empires, many different empires, the British, the Portuguese. They fought over what? They fought over India or uh, Mumbai. In fact, the self-governed state of India did not exist until 1947. So 1947, that was the independence of India from the first from the third century bce uh, means what before the common era the islands belonged to the buddhist moria okay the islands the indian islands belonged to the buddhist what moria moria empire ruled by emperor ashoka of magadha this was followed by a series of indian dynasties from the second centuries BCE to the 1500s, okay? Each dynasty ruled a different area that it conquered. The last of these was the Mughal Empire, founded in 1529, which controlled Mumbai until they were forced to surrender, to give in, and uh, to give it in and other lands to Portugal in what? In 15. 35 and the first question is and the first question is to understand Mumbai we must first understand its long and politically unstable history okay uh, what do you think here what do you think here hmm. uh, look at the underlying portion is this information on topic or should it be changed what do you think of a 
Huh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm going to tell you why. Because here we're talking about the, the, the sentences that follows. Ya Yusuf, Ya Munir. The sentences that follows has to, to talk about what the instability that India has gone what through. I will go for A. Mister, I will never go for culturally vibrant. And I want you to write the meaning of vibrant means what? Full of energy. Okay? I will never go for this. Economically volatile. Volatile means unstable. And economically, of course, we haven't mentioned anything about what? About economy. But we talked about what? How unstable this uh, subcontinent or Mumbai was. Okay. Let us go to the second one. Drill question two. From the 3rd century BCE, the islands belong to the Buddhist Maurya Empire, ruled by the Emperor Ashoka of Magadha. Is the portion above necessary to the paragraph or no? Yes, I'm going to just put it here. Nayira <laughs> Hatim. Yes or no? B. Ruqayya B. Why? Can you tell me why? Why this part? <laughs> Uh, the island belonged to the Buddhist Maurya Empire, ruled by the Emperor Ashoka of Magadha. Okay? Um, if you are open-minded, and I believe that you are all open-minded, if you are flexible, you need to tell yourself, yes, this sentence gives too much detail. This sentence gives too much detail. Minna uh, Osama uh, said, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Too much detail. Uh, 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 the other thing, ya minna, the other thing, ya minna, ya Zainab, because the paragraph is talking about politics and okay very good but too much detail and can you tell me here are there any other names of leaders mentioned here that's another question you need to ask yourself and that's part of your wati abd rahman part of your flexibility part of your open-mindedness you understand the point and you say what teacher you are definitely right this is the first time we mention ruled by Emperor Ashoka of Magadha. Uh, the rest of the paragraph is, is almost a, a, a general sort of paragraph. It's not specific. It's not mentioning uh, anybody by name. Okay. So again, yes, Shabab, uh, I know that it is quite misleading. It's quite confusing for all of you. But again, you need to tell yourself, teacher, you are right. You are definitely right. right. I'm going to go for B. Uh, and uh, give me your reason, my dear. You'll tell me, teacher, uh, this is the first time we mention what? We mentioned uh, 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 a ruler here or an emperor, though we have got many empires that have uh, colonized Mumbai or India, but there was no mention of any other name. The other thing, teacher, it is a detail which is not relevant. You got the point, right? Uh, do you understand? Do you understand? So we'll go for what? We'll go for B. Okay? Any issues here? The answer is B. Yes, definitely B. And I think I, I said why. Uh, thank you. My, okay. Thank you. Thank you. You are my favorite as well. Each tenacity ruled a different area that it conquered. Should this sentence from the paragraph be kept or deleted? Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh. Write it down on a notebook so you can, you can remember it, okay? Each tenacity ruled a different area that it conquered, okay? And here, this is the paragraph. Does this sentence add any information? Or it is a bit unclear, and for me it's a bit unclear, by the way. Okay, uh, this sentence is, is way, huh? This sentence is way too vague, too unclear, especially to go in the middle of a list of specific rulers, okay? We talked about the rulers here and we talked about who co colonized the, the Mumbai or the subcontinent India. Um, for me here, uh, when I write a sentence like each tenacity ruled a different area that it conquered, for me it is. Uh, uh, unneeded detail. Uh, think about it. You can take a screenshot of, of the paragraph now and you say, what? I don't need it. I don't need it. And you cannot, yeah, Maryam Yehan. Yes, Maryam Yehan. Read from the beginning of the paragraph. From the beginning of the paragraph. You will find like what? This one is not important. Here I'm listing the emperors and the empires that colonized what? Mumbai. Um, I don't need this detail. It's a little, a, a little bit uh, unclear. Okay. So I'm going to go for this one without this. I'm going to cross this while I'm reading. Okay. Uh, uh, to understand Mumbai, we must first understand its long politically unstable history. 
okay mumbai has been fought over by many different empires in fact the self-governed state of india did not exist until 1947 from the third century bce the islands belonged to the buddhist Maurya empire uh, this was followed by uh, again this one is 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 not needed this was followed by a series of indian dynasties from the second century bce to the 1500s uh, the last century was the mughal mughal empire founded in you understand my point that's the flexibility that's the open-mindedness you need to think about it this way i know it is very challenging for some but tell yourself like what the the whole paragraph the the the, the, the main idea of the whole paragraph is what is about listing the empires or or stating the empires that colonized india and what and its rulers okay uh, uh, thank you Anayera. but we don't need a sentence like that because huh, it does not belong or it should not be here within that paragraph Hopefully you understand, so I'll go for what? I'll go for deleted. Questions like these, Ishabab, you cannot do it like in a jiffy, like what? I, I've got it, no. You have to read before and after. If it is included in a paragraph, the whole paragraph should be read. You have got no other option. You have got no other options, okay? Perfect. Then we come to something else, Ishabab, purpose. And that's really, uh, 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 a good question we're gonna uh, we're gonna what we're gonna have here okay okay i'm gonna read this one Sorry. portugal's control of india marks the beginning of the colonial era that's the beginning which was initially defined in india by a struggle for power between the english and the portuguese remember this one everybody's fighting over india by a struggle for power between English and the Portuguese. Both sides especially wanted control of Mumbai. Why? Why? What is the purpose? Huh. What is the purpose? Here, I'm going to use kind of what you hear, I'm going to use kind of support. Due to its ideal location for trade and military defense. That's why both of them were fighting over time. In 1661, England finally gained control of India through what? The marriage of Charles II of England and Catherine of Braganza, who was the daughter of King John IV of Portugal. Yes, Salam. Yes, Salam. Remember, can you see, can you imagine uh, that this marriage between Charles II of England, okay, and Catherine of Braganza, Elia Kanit Bint, El Malik, King John the Fourth of Portugal, can you see in this marriage led to the downfall of the whole empire of the whole Portuguese empire? خلاص كده شايفين ال 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 الجواز عمل إيه؟ ها ضيعوا إمبراطورية كاملة. You understand the point? طيب. England, England leased India. Leased means what? Rented. England soon leased India to the English East India Company. وكأن إنجلترا أجرت الإنديا لشركة اسمها East India Company so the company could civilize develop the subcontinent subcontinent these Asian countries okay like India the company used Mumbai for trade and exploitation of Indian slave labor for over 100 years believe it or not until 1858 during its rule the company merged the islands into one land mass in 1800s they what they united them and so it is today after the indians forced the east india company out el indians خلاص بقى فاكرين جاندي لما طلع وبداوا بقى في موضوع الاندبندنس after the indians forced the east india company out the british government ruled india for for 100 years for 100 more years okay that that's before gandhi i'm sorry okay when the east india company uh, 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 was was kicked out of india the british government ruled india for 100 uh, years okay until the indian independence movement secured the country's independence in 1947 okay that's a good paragraph it might help us in in what in history passages in what in reading okay uh, uh, now now let us do this one and here we are talking about what purpose uh, purpose 
we have got number one support. It can support the point the author is making. And I think it's very clear here. Uh, both sides especially wanted control of, of Mumbai. Why? Due to its ideal location and trade and military defense. Yeah, but that's what, Shabab, that's support. Okay? That's what support. When I say transition, it can bridge the gap between two other pieces of information. Can you tell me how, teacher? Yes, it's here. England soon leased, rented India to the English East India Company. So that's the transition. The company could civilize, develop the subcontinent. You remember? Transition. And now support. What else? Clarification. To clarify. Remember this. It can give an example. So clarification, we can give an example. Or clearer restatement of another idea. A summary or repetition of another idea. Or paraphrasing of another idea. After the Indians forced the East India Company out, the British government ruled India for 100 more years. Until the Indian independence movement secured the country's independence in. For me, this is what? This is sort of what? Clarification. We are clarifying more. Okay? So, remember here, we might be asked about what purpose. Purpose uh, uh, includes what? Purpose includes support, includes transition, and includes what? Clarification. Let us go to the questions. Okay? And... Before we go to the question, yeah, Shabab, uh, yeah, you should be mature enough to tell about what's relevant and what's irrelevant. That's very important for this today, for today's lesson. Uh, 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 by the way, it has nothing to do with uh, whether you know all the vocabulary. And those people who say, teacher, I have a problem. Uh, hey, I would say what? Teacher, I have a problem with uh, understanding all the vocabulary in the writing and language section. It has nothing to do with vocabulary, my dear. Yes, but it has to do more with your ability to figure out whether the paragraph includes detailed pieces of information or not, whether it includes purpose or clarification or even what, or even, uh, 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 as we said here, support and transition, okay? Let us go for this one. Huh. Uh, by the way, we can be asked questions like that. In 1661, in 1661, England finally gained control of India through the marriage of Charles II of England and Catherine of Braganza, who was the daughter of King John IV of Portugal. Uh, what do you think? What purpose does the underlined portion serve in the paragraph above? Clarification. Thank you very much. Uh, those who are still don't understand, who still don't understand. When I say support, so I need what? A reason. When I say transition, huh, it means what? The next sentence is about is about something that has to do with the previous what sentence. So in that case, I'll go for what? I'll go for A. Same passage, Yashabab. This is the same passage and drill question number one. It's the same passage. Uh, and let us go for, uh, uh, we have got uh, here, there is a question. Remember, this is question number one. And here, question number two. So we have got two questions. Um, and the question here is that. Uh, at this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence. Uh, what is the following sentence? Hmm. The Portuguese were very invested in Mumbai as they had founded many Roman Catholic religious orders and built many churches there. Should the writer make this addition here or no? Huh. I want you to start reading from the beginning till here, okay? Huh. Start reading, please. Uh, see. C. Perfect. C. Thank you. Abdurrahman, C. Thank you very much. Perfect. I like it. Look at this one, Yashabab. A sentence like that, when you see it, you don't have to go for AA because, you know, AA, they are like yes. Yes is okay. But we need to go for no's. Perfect. So, the Portuguese were very invested in Mumbai as they founded many. Of course, it has nothing to do with this part. Portugal control in India marks the beginning of colonial era, which was initially defined in India um, by a struggle for power between English and Portuguese. Both sides, of course, of course, when you see here both sides, which is here, you don't have to think that much. It's not the one. So, we need to go for what, as you said, C. Thank you very much. And, and see here, because it makes the following sentence what? Huh. Where are we? 
uh, it makes the following sentence what unclear. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, the one who thought of uh, Portuguese impact on the city is important. I know it's important, but uh, uh, there is no mention of uh, of what Ya Shabab. Uh, there is no mention of um, founding uh, religious whatever churches and stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, remember uh, question number two. Remember uh, drill question number two here. We'll go back now. The author is considering deleting the underlined sentence. Should the author do this or no? Huh. What is the underlined sentence? It's here. It's here. For me, for me, ya shabab, ya banat, I'll start from here and end it here. Okay? Uh, who can read the paragraph, please? But read out loud and slowly. Huh. Who can take the initiative now? Shabab, I'm going to ask a question here. The author is considering deleting the underlying sentence. Should the author do this? What about A? Huh. Why A is wrong? This information is given later in the essay or the passage. Of course, no. I mean, like what? It's not there. It's not there. Uh, somebody said uh, B. Abdurrahman said B. Yes, because it is an interesting but irrelevant digression. And I want you to write digression means what? A departure from the main subject. Digression means departure. In the kinta, you leave the main subject. Departure from the main subject. Okay. Uh, uh, what about... Uh, um, so, um, it is interesting. Yes, it is interesting, but a bit irrelevant. Like... Uh, Nayera here, we have got like positive and negative. We have got positive and negative. It is interesting information, that's right, but it is a relevant direction, a di the digression I understand. No, because it's, uh, it's an okay detail that illuminates the overall progress of the city. I think no. No, because it is an important comment on the disastrous effects of the East India Company rule, and I think here, yes, uh, 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 there is nothing to suggest that joining the island was a bad idea. Yani, there was nothing, to, there was nothing to, su to suggest that, okay? So in that case, yes, Shabab, I'll go for B. And remember B. Huh. Number one, the first part here, interesting. The second part, irrelevant direct, uh, di digression. Second part, irrelevant digression. And let us see it here, okay? Uh, while you are reading here in the India or England soon least, uh, all of a sudden here, during its rule, the company merged the island into one landmass in, um, in the 1800s, and so it is today. It is a kind of interesting sort of piece of information, but it is irrelevant to, I mean, like what? If you took that part and the other part starting from here, you feel like what? It is uh, a bit digressing. Hopefully you understand. Let us go to the last part here of, uh, of the sentence function, uh, common pitfalls. And pitfalls means what? Difficulties. Pitfalls means what? Difficulties. Uh, let us very quickly go through a couple of common pitfalls you could run into uh, on earlier what? Uh, on either revising sentence, sentences question or adding or deleting sentence questions. Um, we have got irrelevance. You need to uh, figure this out. Uh, we have got opposites, and we'll, we'll talk about it right now, and we have got untrue, what else? Uh, and then we are going to have what, and we're going to have some what, some questions, okay? Let us um, talk about this question, which is, um, I think, uh, the last question that we have here, and then we'll go to the, uh, to the writing and language. Drill question. One of the wonders of the world, Stonehenge's purpose has never been fully discovered. This great rock monument located in central England draws people from all over the world who marvel at the ancient structure. 
while many speculate and remember the word speculate speculate means what ya shabab huh you remember like think or believe okay but they don't have uh, the right evidence okay why many speculate that the monument was built as part of the religious ritual in prehistoric times stone hinges tourist center sells many miniature replicas of this monument what do you think what do you think Shabab? Huh? i'm asking you ziad said d do you agree with him okay um, the question is, which choice best concludes the paragraph? Do you think uh, Stonehenge's tourist center sells many miniature replicas of the monument? Of course, A is wrong, not relevant to the main point of the paragraph. Okay, so A is wrong. Uh, Stonehenge is very unremarkable. Of course, that's almost uh, the opposite. That's almost the opposite. Okay, Judy, thank you. Uh, Stonehenge's purpose was discovered in 1977. In 1977, uh, and I think this is not true uh, because it directly contradicts information in sentence one. Look at sentence number one. Has never been fully discovered. So that's what, ya shabab, that's untrue. So the reason why uh, Stonehenge was built may never be known exactly the complete uh, this complete uh, sentence um, uh, you know like what or or, or this sentence completes uh, uh, or, or it is a sort of a logical way and fits with the main point of what of the rest of the paragraph so we have to go for what we have to go for d hopefully uh, uh, things are better when it comes to sentence function questions okay we need again to be flexible we need to be open-minded we need to read a bit extensively. That's what we have to do.